Hello guys, welcome to Codecraft. This is Deepanka. I am a tech lead and a Java full stack developer. Uh, so today we will discuss about the interview questions and answers. Uh, before we start, uh, if you have not subscribed us, please go and subscribe us to get our interesting videos. So let's get started. Okay, so the first question that comes uh, in every interview for uh, if you are going for an interview of uh, zero to three years of experience you are having and you are going for an interview you will face this question definitely uh, so that is JDK JVM and JRE maybe the question is phrased in a different way like what is the difference between JDK JVM and JRE or what is JVM what is JRE what is JDK so let's uh, clear these doubts okay so what is JVM so JVM stands for Java virtual machine so what is it? It is a runtime abstract environment in which one can execute the bytecode. Okay. So if we want to uh, you know, go inside that, before that we need to understand some processes. Okay, something. So basically, whatever we are writing in our, if you will see this particular picture, so whatever you are, we are writing in our, uh, you know, IDE, any IDE you are using, or you know basic id like notepad if you are using and you are writing a class you are writing mostly in english so that is the syntax we have okay that cannot be executed that is that needs to be compiled right so that part is a source code the dot java file you are writing okay that part is a source code so we have a compiler java c compiler which is compiling it and creating the dot class file which is a byte code right so this byte code can also be executed in on uh, JVM and you can get the output but the problem is the byte code which is going to be executed will make the code slower okay so for that reason we have certain setup inside the JVM okay so uh, the first thing is whatever class you have written that would be going to the class loaders and then we'll have a bytecode verifier to verify it and then as I was telling like that if you will execute the bytecode directly it is a binary but it will be slower so we have a just-in-time compiler which will convert the bytecode to native machine code okay so this unit is called JVM here okay so JVM does this job it executes your it takes your uh, bytecode and executes it or you can say it helps execute our code and uh, you will get the output okay so then what is JRE so when JVM is so if you come to this picture so J, this is JVM and for to execute our uh, you know our uh, codes uh, the byte codes JVM needs some libraries and other files at runtime to execute that right so this libraries and other files we utilize along with JVM we call this bundle as JRE Java runtime environment so this Java runtime environment is nothing but it provides all the libraries other required files which JVM uses and collectively they are called JRE so now what is JDK so Java development kit is a tool necessary to compile the package compile and package the java programs okay so as you, you saw here we are using java c com to compile our source code to the white code so what we need to what we, ha we are using is we are using a tool called java c similarly we are doing this execution here we are doing the execution utilizing java so these are kind of tools which are available in development tools when we install JDK so that we can utilize this JDK and do it right so the total development tools along with this JRE so the whole thing is called this whole thing is called Java development kit or JDK so I hope this is clear so this is the difference between JDK JRE and JVM let's proceed to the next question Okay, so what is, we, we had a little glimpse of JIT earlier in the previous question. So now let's discuss about it uh, in a 
and uh, descriptive manner so what is J jit in jvm or what is just in time compiler in java okay so jvm uh, as we saw uh, it, this picture is also available here as we saw that jvm loads the bytecode after you uh, after the uh, compile after the java code is compiled or dot java file is compiled to dot class file what jvm does jvm utilizes a class loader and then loads the class so this class files then uh, the binary code can be executed directly or can be interpreted to the machine code then we execute it right so either it can this code byte code can directly be executed or it can be interpreted either way it will take some time right so if you are ut utilizing the interpreter the performance will be slower because the interpreter interprets line by line it goes to first line then goes to next line then goes to next line like that so to avoid this just in time compiler just in time compiler compiles the bytecode to a native machine code which executes faster quite faster by the hardware and you get the output easily it also enhances the efficiency by removing the sub expressions and by applying some optimization techniques there are certain optimization techniques that it utilizes just in time compiler utilizes and creates the native machine code during the runtime so it will it makes the java program to execute faster just like our uh, other programming languages like c c++ uh, so those kind of programming languages are having the compiler uh, diet compilation to this and just like that we utilize these things i hope this is clear let's go to the next question okay so this is a very common question that comes uh like what is public static void main you it can come this way or it can be rephrased like uh can i write static public and then void main right yeah so let's discuss about it first let's dis know what is it okay so what is public the first thing is public so it is access modifier what is static it is also access modifier or you can say both are also keyword and then void void is nothing but return type and then main main is nothing but the method name right then what is it this is a declaration of an array string type string array and this is the argument is nothing but identifier which is a variable which is a kind of array so this is a function parameter this is a function parameter collectively which is a kind of array string array okay now the next question comes can we write static public instead yes we can write we can change the public static to static public as a sequence of access modifier doesn't have any impact so we can do this and we can write it here so this can be static public then rest okay so now another question that may come can i change this sequence string to integer no we cannot we always have to use string array for command line arguments i hope this is clear let's go to next question what is association association is a relationship between two classes those are set up through objects it basically explains the object interdependency so let's see how many different kind of uh, association it uh, can come into picture so there are four type of in, uh, association that can come into picture is one to one one to many many to one and many to many so one to one so let's take an example like one person can have only one passport so that is one to one so one person can have one to uh, uh, cannot have multiple passports so that's why this relationship is defined this way now one to many so in case of one to many one organization can have many employees right so that can be one to many so similarly many employees works for works in one organization can have can be treated as many to one so many to many so now many employees have uh, have been trained under many trainers right so there can be uh, certain employees who are trained on one empl uh, trainer one then these certain em uh, employees can also be tra uh, trained under trainer two and then trainer 2 can also be training some other employees right so it is many to many so 
so this is kind of, this this can also be association can also be defined at two different ways like is a relationship or has a relationship right so is a association is a very common the concept of inheritance which is like one object acquires all the properties and behaviors of the parent object so if you have a if you have a class a which is a parent and if you have a class b which is inheriting class a will have all the properties and behaviors so if we'll take a simple example like if you have an employee parent and ui developer is a child class so basically ui developer is an employee as well so this defines this relationship is a so next has a so has a relationship uh, can association can have two um, uh, different categories like composition and aggregation so composition is something where the life cycles of objects are tied strongly that means if one object dies or destroyed then the other object will be having an impact okay so but doesn't have to go other way around like if object one is destroyed object two will be impacted but doesn't mean like if object two will be destroyed object one will be impacted as an example we can take an apartment so in an apartment we have certain flats number of flats so if your apartment goes down or gets destroyed due to some earthquake then also the flats goes down but doesn't mean if a flat goes down because of some issue inside it the the apartment will go down apartment may exist okay next is aggregation aggregation there is so it's a weak association so life cycles of uh, objects are not tied strongly so it is a weak as association so like employees and company so if employee resigns company still exist if company shuts down employee goes to another company right so they both echo so they both exist if one, uh, the other one is destroyed so this is aggregation mostly aggregation is utilized for reusability okay so i hope this is clear then let's go to next one okay so this is a very common question uh, explain different type of constructors in java so what is a constructor a constructor is a block of code similar to the method it is uh, called when an instance of a class is created so at the time of calling constructor memory for the object is allocated in the memory main memory okay so now what are the different types of constructors one is default constructor it is also called no argument constructor if we do not define any constructor compiler so compiler will create a constructor with no arguments so if you are not going to define anything it's empty class that means our compiler will create a constructor okay for us without any arguments if we explicitly create any constructor any any kind of constructor it may be a parameter constructor or default constructor compiler will not create a default constructor for us okay then we have to explicitly create a default constructor so i'll show by so in example so let's uh, go for the parameterized constructor so what is parameter constructor if we define a constructor with parameters in it then it is called parameterized constructor okay if parameter constructor is defined then compiler will not create default constructor if we want a default constructor we have to create explicitly now copy constructor copy constructor is as the name suggests copy constructor is means you are going to copy the objects uh, another object and get the data from that object and utilize it so java doesn't create a copy constructor by default like other languages we have to create it explicitly now some rules certain rules you need to follow to create constructor constructor name must be the same as the class name a constructor must have a have no explicit return type a java constructor cannot be abstract static final and synchronized these keywords you cannot utilize before it okay so let's see next okay so in eclipse i'll have created one project first project so you can directly uh, create a project and uh, i'm just creating a new class so i'm just giving a name let's say test okay so i need public study void man yes i need okay so now uh, let's say i'm just creating another class called student okay class student okay in this class student what i'll do is i'll take two variables okay one is uh, string name uh, then another one is 
string sorry address fair enough so now these two variables i am going to utilize in my program okay so if i'm just first first thing i'll uh, just don't do anything i'll simply call create an object to it let's say student obj equals to new student and this so once i do this there's nothing you're seeing here right so if i'll have a simple uh, method called public void display and here in this i am just doing a sysout okay I am printing and now I don't have any constructor here and if I'll call obj dot if you'll see I can do this fair enough okay if I'll run it I'm printing is getting printed right that means even if I don't have I have not explicitly defined the constructor I am able to call it here okay so now let's get rid of this and create a constructor public student inside this I'll take string name and string address okay so now if 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 you see when i created this this program started throwing an error why because it doesn't have a default constructor so if i have a param any constructor defined explicitly i need to define the default constructor if i want to utilize it okay so if i'll do this it's valid okay so this display is erroring out because i don't have it i don't need it okay so this is fine this is pretty much fine so i can have a default constructor i can have a parameter constructor so if i'll create an object another new object called obj1 and here i'll give a name and i'll give an address for now i'll put india and if i if you'll see i'll do this and inside this i'll assign it to the global values with this dot name equals to name fair enough then this dot address equals to address fair enough so now I have assigned this to an additional uh, addition to it. I'll just put a sys out saying I am, I am, I am parameterized constructor. Okay, so now as it is set, if I'll run this, then I'll get this output. Okay, I am parameterized constructor. So after this, if I'm going to sys out something more, okay, something more in the sense, if I'll put obj1 dot name and I'll put sys out obj1 dot address, if you will see these two outputs, it will be the SI initialized value which we passed through it okay so now this is fine so if i'll do this we before initializing with the parameter constructor with the other object 
obj then you will see it will be null okay so now this is fine so next is copy constructor so copy constructor we need to define it explicitly so for that what i'll do is i'll just take student inside that i'll create a class variable student and st okay now what i'll do is i'll assign the similar way before that i'll just put that i am in i am copy constructor okay now what i'll do is i'll go here and put this dot name equals to st dot name okay the object which i'm going to throw here i'll just put it here this dot address equals to st dot address okay so now if i'll do this and i will create another object student obj2 equals to new student inside this i need to pass obj1 so i am copying thus those values now if i will take this and put inside obj2 here if i will try you can see i am a copy constructor if i little bit pull it up this is coming from the default constructor and after default constructor and this is coming i am parameter constructor if you want to see with a default constructor comment here i am happy to do it okay i am default though it is not default anymore we are defining an empty constructor no argument constructor you can say or you can rightly say no arg constructor that will be more appropriate okay so i am no arg constructor here the null we are not uh, initializing anything then i am parameter constructor i am initializing these two values then the copy constructor i am taking the object 2 sorry i am taking the object 1 here as a parameter and then passing to the copy constructor and the rest it is printing with object 2 this is how copy constructor works so so to find this program i'll uh, put the uh, put the project in the description the github link to it so you can take it from there if you want thanks